Analytical procedures and developing expectations are a common practice in an audit. Revenue as a critical component of an audit is no different. Usually, at planning stage, auditor develop an expectation of revenue amount for the full year. It is the forecasted revenue amount that they think should be for the full year. And at the year end, when they find their forecast is close to the actual number, they feel more comfortable and secure to sign off the account. Despite its importance, it is one of the frequent reason coming up in most audit failures. There are various ways auditor develop this expectation, such as based on qualitative data and converting into quantitative. For example, discussion with clients and anticipation of new revenue coming in the year. Another easy way is the time series expectation where auditors use early months of the financial year's sales data, average it on a month and extrapolate it for the full year revenue. Today, we are going to see Monte Carlo simulation. A sophisticated method which generally used in corporate finance and investment industries for forecasting revenues. It is not common in audit as it is very cumbersome to create in Excel. But thanks to Python that made it easier. It is proven that it is a way much better and powerful technique than simple averaging. I will encourage auditors to develop an understanding of this method if you are not already familiar. It is a forecasting method based on mathematical technique which use to estimate the possible outcomes of an uncertain event. It then recalculates the result over and over, each time using a different set of random numbers between the minimum and the maximum values. In a typical Monte Carlo experiment, this exercise can be repeated thousands of times to produce a large number of likely outcomes. Now let's see it in action. Suppose I have this past sales data of a company which sells only one product, baby formula. This is the data file which has many fields or columns, the country where sales happen, order date, etc, etc. But my focus is on this column, total revenue. This is my Python script in Jupyter Notebook. Consider it my audit work paper. Let me show you first what we are going to achieve with this code and after that I will go through the code in more details. This is the first outcome, a graph which is visually telling us 10,000 data observation based on random probabilities. There are so many lines in the graph and honestly it does not make sense until we go through some basics and additional information. The y-axis is showing revenue amount, but due to limited space, it is showing in exponent multiple format. LE8 on the top left is showing the multiple. So 0 0.2 on this scale is 20 million. A red line for average. Some humanly understandable information on the top showing minimum expected revenue number 12.6 million, maximum 130 million, average 72 million and a volatility number. But the next sale is the real beauty of Monte Carlo, where we can explore possibilities. What it is showing here is that the possibility, probability or likelihood of a company's revenue to reach 40 million, 50 million, 60 million, etc. The most certain expected revenue is 40 million and 50 million, 98% and 92% likelihood respectively. So how this would help in the audit? With these numbers, you know what to expect and what would be the reasonable revenue figure for the company for the full financial year. However, in case if the reported revenue amount is above 90 million, you can quickly red flag it as an unreasonable 
and channel your resources to investigate it. So let's quickly go through the Python code. As usual, first I will load up all required libraries. Then I will read the data file which is babyformula.csv. Next, I'm grouping individual sales into an year so we can see total sales for the year which would look like this. Knowing yearly sales for different years would help us to see the trend and also it would help us to set thresholds that we will use in the next stage. Then I'm selecting my desired number of repetition or iteration. I have selected 10,000 but it could be even billion depending on your available computing power. In the next stage, we will set different thresholds. For example, probability of revenue reaching 40 million, 50 million and so on. We can set as many thresholds as we wish to. As we have seen it earlier, that these thresholds help us to see what are the possibilities, probabilities of reaching these numbers. Similarly, we can set growth thresholds for revenue. For example, what is the possibility of revenue growing 5%, 6%, 7% in this year? Next, we are calculating two main ingredients of Monte Carlo simulation, mean revenue and standard deviation. And here we are performing Monte Carlo simulation and saving it in a variable revenue underscore Monte underscore Carlo using NumPy random normal function and by providing three parameters. I won't go into much details of NumPy but very briefly. The NumPy random normal function generates a sample of numbers drawn from the normal distribution otherwise called the Gaussian distribution. The np.random.normal function has three primary parameters that control the output, log, scale and size. The log parameter controls the mean of the function. The scale parameter controls the standard deviation of the normal distribution. The size parameter controls the size and shape of the output. The next four line of code is extracting some information from simulated model such as minimum revenue, maximum revenue, average revenue and volatility. Volatility here I am referring to standard deviation. Creating a color function that uses CSS in Jupyter Notebook. Now saving extracted information above in a variable rev underscore states. The aim is to use it within a graph and in a report as an additional information. Here this is a matplotlib graph code. If you are familiar with matplotlib, then this is just as usual stuff. Except this line of code here, plt.axh span, where I am adding a gray area to show frequent volatility. This is one standard deviation. Next, developing possibilities of revenue. Here, I am creating a function that is calculating the possibilities of revenue based on Monte Carlo simulation we created earlier. I am using threshold we set earlier and likelihood or possibilities of achieving this revenue. The revenue growth section works exactly the same as we discussed above. I have added this section for accountants who works in planning and forecasting and require additional information to support their forecasted numbers. Auditor requires evidence of their work in the audit file. Therefore, I would suggest you should save this entire script and its result in PDF as a report and attach it in your audit file. As I said above, Monte Carlo is much powerful tool than simple averaging and Python made it much easier and quicker than usual traditional computer applications. If you are not familiar with Python and want to learn, I have a series Python for Accountants in this channel to get you going with the basics of Python and programming. If you want to learn data analytics, I have a fundamental level introductory course 
Introduction to Data Analytics for Accountants on Udemy. The link is in the description.